our factorial function of any value z, we want that to equal the factorial function of one less than that, even though z may not be an integer times whatever z is. And to work that out, we're going to need integration by parts. Some of you may remember taking derivatives by parts. That's where you've got one function. That's a function of x I'm going to call u. You've got another one called v. I'm not always going to write the brackets x every single time. I'll just write u as u. But I mean it's u as a function of x. So if you've got u times v and you want to take the derivative of both of them, you can just work out the derivative of u times v and then add to that the deriv uh, u times the derivative of v. And that all checks out. Oh, if that's not familiar, oh. Well, maybe let the rest of this just kind of wash over you as a kind of spoken word poetry, just to get the feel for how, how the maths works. But don't get too stressed on the details. There will be a fun philosophical puzzle halfway through for everyone. So, you know, stay tuned. Now, integration by parts is the same idea, but we just integrate every single thing in this. So, uh, lots of dx's. And oh, that's a mess. Right, let me um, tidy that up a little bit. And I'm going to rearrange it slightly. So here, we're taking the integral of the derivative. So really nothing changes. But if this was going from limits of a to b, this bit here is just u times v, but we evaluate it from a to b. And then I'm going to use this one here as kind of our original integral, put it over here. So the derivative from a to b of u times the derivative of v dx, well that equals this one, subtract the other one, this one here. So from a to b, but this time it's u derivative v dx. And what integration by parts means is if you've got something like this where it's one function times the derivative of another one, if you factor in this crazy term, you can swap which of them is the derivative version. And I can show you how that works with our function, where we were going from 0 to infinity. That's going to be a fun in a moment. Then it's times x to the power of z times e to the negative x. And I've done that instead of drawing it underneath, uh, just to make it a bit easier in a moment, times dx. And I can now say, you know what? My u function is going to equal x to the z, which you can see. That's what we've got up there. And the derivative of u is uh, z times x to the z minus 1. That'll come in handy later. And my v function is going to equal negative e to the negative x, which means its derivative equals, well, it's just that times negative, right? So that's just e to the negative x. And oh my goodness, that's what I've got over there. So I've set this up to be u times the derivative of v, which is what we've got on the starting end there. So if we work out this crazy term, we can then use it to switch to this form. So that crazy term, oh, what's that going to be, right? So that is, uh, we've got to do u times v. So that's uh, x to the z times, uh, where's v? Negative e to the negative x from a to b, when our a to our b is 0 to infinity. So, huh, oh, that's going to be fun. OK, let's plug them in. So if we plug in infinity, oh dear. Now, uh, people are going to get real upset, but I'm going to write infinity as if it's a number to the power of z divided by e, and there's negative at the front, uh, to the infinity up there. And I know people are going to get real sad that I've put it in as a number. But what I'm basically saying is, is infinity to the power of some constant z, is that bigger or smaller than some constant e to the power of infinity up there. So which one of those two is bigger? And this is the philosophical puzzle for everyone. Infinity to the power of something compared to something to the power of infinity, which is bigger. Turns out it's the bottom one, or at least that gets bigger faster. And so we can say this thing actually tends to zero. And actually when we put the zeros into both of them, zero to the z divided by, oh, let's not go down well, actually, no, um, e to the 0 is going to give us a 1. So 0 divided by 1 is it's 0. So basically, this whole thing here, all of this equals 0. So we can ignore it. All we're left with now was the integral from 0 to infinity of, well, what do we got now? So this is now the derivative of u times v. Derivative of u is this fun thing here. So I'm going to move that down there. That's z times x to the z minus 1 times, 
v. So that's uh, negative e to the negative x times dx. And actually, if we look up here at our original uh, thing, we've got this negative there. So we've got to pop that out the front. But thankfully, that negative there and that one there kind of go away. And well, wait a minute. That z's a constant, so we can put that z out the front. We're doing integration from 0 to infinity. We've now got x to the z minus 1 divided by e to the x dx. And what does that equal? Well, it equals our original thing. That's 0 to infinity uh, e to the z, oh, sorry, e, x to the, if only I had an undo, undo, x to the z divided by e to the x dx. And that's exactly what we wanted. If this here is a factorial function of z, you can see it equals z outside of 1 less than z. And that is exactly the recursive relationship we wanted.